Well, hey guys, it's Darwin, and this is the Samaya Assault 2 Ultra, a two pound, two person, freestanding tent that cost $2,000. But why? What's it do that other tents can't? Who's it for? Why do I have it? And again, why the hell does it cost $2,000? So over the last year, I have fallen down a rabbit hole and gotten completely addicted to a new outdoor discipline, mountaineering. Last year when I was in Europe to do the Tour de Mont Blanc, I met up with my buddy and pretty hardcore alpinist Fez that you guys might remember from my 2018 PCT through hike to do some light mountaineering in the Alps. Well, we ended up going out and doing some glacier travel and climbing on the Mirror de Glace around Mont Blanc and I absolutely fell in love. So ever since getting back from that trip, I have been in this big research and learning stage, trying to learn as much as I can about mountaineering, techniques, and testing a bunch of gear, a bunch of crazy gear that I have never used over the last eight years of ultralight through hiking, like big insulated, heavy, clunky climbing boots, uh, safety equipment, like technical ice axes, helmets, and even full-on climbing equipment, like this climbing rack that I have. Not ultra light, bro. Not to mention uh, needing some high elevation snow camping gear because I'm gonna be out at high elevations on glaciers. So I started looking at tents because for the past eight years, I have exclusively used trekking pole tents. And trekking pole tents aren't exactly great in super high winds at crazy high elevations. They're also not great on snow because they need tension to stake them out. So I started doing my research and figuring out what new ultralight freestanding tents there were out there. And a tent brand and a specific tent that I kept seeing come up on people's gear lists that were big hardcore alpinists was Samaya, specifically the Samaya Assault 2 Ultra. But when I looked at the price tag, it was $2,000. Now to me, it just looked like any other dome freestanding tent. So I couldn't quite figure out why this tent was so damn expensive and why so many people used it. Well, with doing all of my research and testing all this new gear, there was no way I was gonna drop $2,000 on a tent just to see if it might work for me in the long run. But luckily my buddy and climbing partner, Jason, owns two of these so he lent me one of these about five months ago. I've been testing it out, using it on certain trips to find out why it costs $2,000, what makes it special, who's it for, and is it something that I could use going forward? So before I get into the pros and the cons of it and why it's so expensive, let's go over the specs. The Samaya Assault 2 Ultra is a two-person dome-style freestanding tent that is made out of a Dyneema composite fabric and a two-layer Dyneema laminated EPTFE membrane fabric. Man, that's a mouthful. It uses two Easton carbon poles to make the dome shape with a smaller carbon cross pole for the peak. It has one single front entry door with no vestibule and it features no mesh. Not on the door, not on the vents. And this tent has some of probably the most unique features I've seen in any tents, like two big mesh wall pockets for storing tons of gear. It has a little bitty mesh gear loft to be able to dry socks and stuff like that at night. And probably the most unique feature are two big zippered vents at the peak, again, with no mesh, and a single Dyneema runner line that goes in between them that I'll talk about here in a minute. Uh, with the poles, the weight of the tent on my scale comes out to 2.6 ounces. It's made in France. And again, the cost of the tent is between $1,800 and $2,000, depending on where you buy it. So for this review, uh, I kind of want to do something a little bit different. I don't want to just go over the pros and the cons. Let's start off with talking about some of those very unique features and who they're for. Uh, for that, let's head back out to the field. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice right off the bat with this tent is the fact that it has no vestibule. Uh, the main reason it has no vestibule is because if you're at higher elevations and the winds are high, you don't want something to be able to get up under the wind to be able to get up under that vestibule and then kind of turn the, the tent into a sail. But that does make it very strange if you're using it in like any other environment. So if it's raining, 
you don't really have anything to kind of hide out under, cook under, anything like that. So this is just a one single piece door. Um, and then it has this kind of like little over flap here that protects the zipper. So you can kind of see the inside of the tent right there. Um, so if I go to open that up, um, again, there is no mesh on the door. It is just a single piece of that, uh, that membrane Dyneema fabric. Um, on the inside, again, here are those big side pockets that go down the side. I've never seen this in a tent. This is completely new to me. So again, it, it's a full on mesh pocket and it's pretty tall. As you can see, here's my hand. So you can see how big that is. And it goes the entire length of the tent and it's on uh, both sides. And then up top is that gear loft that I was talking about. Um, again, so you can put things like socks and uh, to dry out throughout the night and really anything else. And then on both sides, you have these big zipper openings, these big vents. Um, but again, no mesh, no mesh on the inside. And then you can see the line, the Dyneema line that runs in between. And the main reason for this is actually, if you have a climbing harness and you're wearing it, you can actually take the tent, you can secure it to the side of the mountain, like kind of put in an anchor to the side of the mountain, tie it to that line, and then you can tie your harness to that line. And then basically, if there's a big wind or a big storm, you're not gonna get blown off the side of the mountain. And you can see that uh, right here on the outside of the vent. So it kind of just hangs out right there. Basically take that, you clip that, you would run that out to the ground, and then you would clip yourself to that part, basically. Now the main body fabric that all the walls and everything are made out of is this two layer Dyneema uh, breathable material. Um, it's, it's, this is totally different than any other tent material I've seen. And I think this is kind of what makes this tent very unique. So this stuff is meant to breathe really well and, and just let air flow through it a lot better, kind of like a, like a rain jacket, basically. So it blocks out uh, moisture from the outside, but the inside is able to breathe a lot better. Another reason it doesn't have a lot of vents. Now I had spent two nights in this and I can say that I didn't have any condensation. Uh, I did leave these guys cracked open a little bit, uh, the handful of nights that I've slept in it. So that probably helped. But overall, I, I, I can't really speak for if this is better than any other fabric or if it's just because of the environment that I was in. And then you can see that the, uh, the floor material, the main bathtub is all kind of the standard DCF uh, that you would find on something like a Z-Pax tent or something like that. As far as the headroom goes in this tent, it's pretty standard for most like small freestanding dome tents. But one thing that I noticed uh, being 6'1 is overall, I didn't have a lot of room. You know, this is supposed to be a two person tent, but whenever I slept in it, uh, I definitely had to lay diagonally. There's no way that I would be able to lay in here straight with another person. And I think that's mainly because this tent isn't really meant for like general backpacking and camping where you wanna spend a lot of time in your tent. This is really made as a shelter to kind of make it through the night if you're in a bad storm, um, high winds, high elevation, a lot of snow. And then the overall structure of it being that dome and having those cross poles uh, makes it very strong to be able to stand up against uh, high winds and heavy snow. So very unique. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, this tent is a very, very unique tent. Yeah. All right, so after going over all those crazy specs, uh, who's this tent for? Well, because it lacks so many of those general tent features like mesh to keep bugs out, like a vestibule for rain and to store your stuff, obviously it is not for the everyday backpacker and camper. It's not for the bike packer. It is a one tool for one job and that is high alpine mountaineering. 
You know, the features that this has in it is really made to, to make sure that it's a safe tent. That if something were to happen, if you were to get in a storm, uh, if there was a high wind and you were possibly gonna be blown off a mountain, that this could help save your life. So um, it's definitely not made for me. Where I really want to use something like this and I see the benefits of it in mountaineering, um, I always like to have gear that is multi-purpose and I wanna make sure that if I'm gonna buy a good freestanding tent, that I can use it for not only four season mountaineering, but I can also use it for bikepacking in the summer. I want something that I can use on general winter backpacking trips. It's gonna be good on snow. And because this lacks all of those other features for me, um, it just doesn't do it. Now, with that being said, is it worth $2,000? Well, I guess that all depends. Uh, the I guess that's in the eye of the beholder, or I guess it's in the pocket of the outdoorsman. Because it does have those very specific features like that Dyneema runner to be able to clip your harness to, because it has that structure to it where it can be really good in snow, because it has that membrane fabric to it that makes it breathe really, really well at high elevation in a ton of snow and not get a lot of condensation on the inside. Yeah, sure, I, if you want those things, I'm sure it's worth $2,000, but for me, not exactly. Um, not something that I would use going forward and I'm not gonna be buying one of these. I am still in search of that perfect uh, ultralight freestanding tent and uh, this ain't it. So uh, there you go. Uh, I have a new tent coming in about uh, a week that I'm gonna be taking out to Colorado next month for a mountaineering trip uh, to get ready for Island Peak in Nepal in April, and I hope that that is going to be a better option, and it didn't cost $2,000, which is a good thing for me. And I'll keep you guys updated on that, of what I end up going with for these excursions and for uh, some of the other upcoming trips that I have where I will need a freestanding tent. Speaking of that, what is a crazy expensive tent that you've seen? What's a crazy expensive piece of gear that you're like, why would people pay that much money for it? Or what's something that you have been recently testing? Have you been getting in, into crazy stuff like mountaineering? Uh, whatever it is, leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. I love knowing what you guys are into and what you're checking out because that gives me ideas uh, on what I should be checking out. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. I love you. And as always, thanks for watching.